I had nothing on me, not even one hair. I started crying at the bus station. I was pregnant and had nowhere to go. Hey guys! You're watching Moments with Mills and welcome to episode 2. The objective of Moments with Mills is to encourage people who are going through similar situations in their life to know that there is always a green light at the end of the tunnel. Today, we're going to hear a story from an anonymous person. Here is the story. My story is a very long one. I will not be able to say the names of all the countries I've been to since I left home, but I went through a lot of difficulties. I left my country not because of war, but because of conflicts in my family. My family didn't have much money. When my father died, he left a few things and his family took everything away from my mother and from her children. We became homeless. As we had no place to sleep, we had to split up. Each one went to sleep in a different place and we would try and get together later. I worked selling cell phones. I earned little, but I saved as much as I could so that one day I could get out of there. One day, a friend of mine told me that she couldn't take it anymore and that she was going to leave the country. I also couldn't take it anymore. I looked at the situation my family was in and I saw that it wasn't working. We couldn't buy rice or chicken to eat. I made up my mind to leave. But being a woman and the youngest daughter, I couldn't tell my mom. She would not have let me go. In my country, if you go out and disappear for a few days, your family will get worried and start thinking that you're dead. I was 29 years old when I decided to leave. I escaped on a ship that was coming to the American continent. We arrived Ecuador, but it was bad there. They didn't have much to help us. There were two boats leaving, one for Cuba, one for Colombia. My friend and I had no money to pay for the ticket, but the man on the boat took us to Colombia without charging anything. It was very difficult for me. I didn't know at that time but when I left my country, I was already four months pregnant. The journey to Colombia took two months. So I arrived there six months pregnant. When I arrived in Colombia, they stole all our money and our passports. We stayed there for 10 days. I slept on the street under a tree. I had no one to call for and ask for money. There was a man who worked taking migrants through the countries there. He saw I was pregnant. I told him I was alone and that my son's father wasn't with us. He liked me and he said he was going to help me. He told me that I couldn't stay there for long. Being a pregnant woman alone, I could be caught. He put me on the bus that took me to another place. Another country that I've forgotten the name is where I arrived. And then passed through that country and I arrived in Peru. The man had told me that I should go to Sao Paulo and he had given me a number of someone who took migrants there. But when I arrived in Peru, I didn't have a phone. So I started asking people, how do you get to Sao Paulo? I had nothing on me, not even one hair. I started crying at the bus station. I was pregnant and had nowhere to go. A woman, Anne Linder, came over and said she was going to help me. She said, you crossed to Rio Branco and when you get to Rio Branco, I will put you on the bus to Sao Paulo. When we got there, she took me to her house. I met her daughter, Karina, and her husband, Jao. I stayed there for five days, she asked me to rest, and said that afterwards she would buy me a ticket to go to Sao Paulo. She asked me if I had a family there. I said no, but that I know someone living there. All of this had happened and my family still didn't know where I was. When I arrived in Sao Paulo, I went to the migrant shelter. I was exhausted, still pregnant, but as God is good, an African at the shelter told me that she couldn't stay there anymore and that she was going to live in an occupation, a squat. I didn't even know what an occupation was. But she explained it to me. Take me, I can stay here. I was eight months pregnant. The woman who organized the squad gave us a room to live in. Things started getting better. The organizer of the squad helped me a lot. After my son was born, she gave me a job. She said that I had to work. She got a job for me in the squad's kitchen. She said she was going to pay me and that I wouldn't be too far from my son either. She told me that I didn't need to pay the space. She said she was going to pay me and that I wouldn't be too far from my son either. She told me I didn't need to pay the space fee yet and that I could save some money. All of this had happened and my family still didn't know where I was. 
When I started to earn a little money, I thought now I'm going to start helping my family back home. I called my brother and asked if everything was fine. He started crying on the phone. He thought I was dead. I said I was in Brazil. He asked where Brazil was. I said it was in Latin America. He asked, how did you get there? I said that I'd gone through many things in life, but thank God I'm alive. My mom got on the phone and started crying. Everyone thought I was dead. In our culture, when somebody dies, we call everyone to eat together, to have a coffee and forget the pain. They had done that for me already. I asked where my mother was leaving. She said, I've been living in church for the past six months. Mom, look for a house with a living room bathroom and kitchen for $150. At that time, $150 was about 500 hell. I wasn't paying any contribution for the squad and was earning 1,000 hell so I could send money to them. I sent money to my mom. I sent $300 to make a deposit for two months. I never thought I, the youngest daughter, could help my family. I thought that my older sisters who helped me. When I sent the money, my mother and everyone cried. I raised my family. I am NM and that is my story. Watch out for episode three. And if you have any story or any situation you've been going through, you can send an email to gmconsultancy2022 at gmail.com. If you want to share your story, you can send me a message and you can share your story with me. This is your host, Judge Mills, and you're watching Moments with Mills. Ciao!